Today it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Vipin Swarup, who comes to us from Mild Haunts, the Mitre Corporation. Uh, Dr. Swarup actually is returning close to his old haunts. He got his PhD at the University of Illinois uh, doing work in formal verification, uh, type verification systems. Uh, more recently, well, since then he's worked in quite a few areas. Uh, he was a pioneer in mobile agent security and uh, done a lot of work related to information assurance. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Dr. Swarup to the Serious Security Seminar. Thank you. So um, in today's talk, I'm going to be giving a broad overview of research challenges in secure information sharing or assured information sharing. And this has been a grand challenge problem for several decades. What I'm going to do in the first half of this talk is give an overview of the current incarnation of this problem. Why is it of interest again today and what are the new challenges that face us? And in the second half of the talk, I will actually go into three specific problem areas that we are interested in and working on. Now, sharing in a very general high-level marketing kind of sense is that you bring you do sharing because it brings data and people together to work a problem as a team. And I hope in the first half of the talk to do a lot better than this uh, slide. But the problem space that we are in particular interested in in the government is that you have a lot of federal agencies and other government agencies. Each of them have their own networks and their own set of data that they, they, they uh, control. Now, clearly, there's a need to share data across these organizations. So what they've done is they've set up a shared space in between, which allows these agencies to collaborate. And there's also pairwise sharing that happens among the organizations. Now, these agencies and organizations also need to interact with other state and local law enforcement. They need to interact with other foreign nations, other government agencies, uh, international organizations, and so on. And the computing infrastructure is really quite complex. The solution so far really has been to build walls. We are on one side of the wall and they are on the other side of the wall. And the walls are designed to protect us from the bad people. Now this is great and it's worked for quite a long time. There were two major challenges that came up when we built these walls. One is that we do want data to be able to cross these walls. In certain cases, we want good data to be able to cross. In other cases, we want to slow down the flow of bad data, of data that we really don't want to get across. And the second problem that uh, we faced was that if you're on one side of the wall, you would like to have visibility on the other side. Uh, an analyst on a secret network would like to be able to browse the unclassified internet and find out what's out there. And the solutions that developed were largely along the lines of security guards that mediated flow of information across security levels. Now this view wo has worked well for many decades. The problem is that the modern view is that it's not just pairwise interactions, it's a web. A web of people, a web of resources, and the value that comes about from the internet really is in these unintended connections that happen between people, between resources, between organizations. And when we build these fine-grained walls, what we're really doing is we're cutting off the opportunity to have these, these unexpected interactions. Now, another challenge that really is highlighted by today's collaboration infrastructures is that um, I have a five-year-old daughter, and if she has a secret and she wants to share it with her class, she doesn't stand up in front of the class and broadcast it to everyone. What she does is she goes to her best friends, pulls them aside and whispers it in their ear, one by one by one. Now, that does several things. One is it makes her feel more important. It makes her friends feel more important that they're getting this secret information. It makes the information itself more valuable. It strengthens their relationships. And that's really the power of social networking. And I think we are seeing this, that on the internet in a lot of different environments, that social networks are critical to sharing. So whatever solutions we build have to be sensitive to this fact. The second complication that comes about is that we have data in all these different organizations and they are situated in different security domains and different, at different classification levels, in different contexts. But what we want to do is we want to be able to fuse this and 
connect the dots, figure out what information can we glean by combining all this different information. And doing this when you don't have complete visibility into the entire data is quite difficult. The third issue that comes about is that so far we've been dealing with sharing on a very local scale between two organizations, between a small group of people. It's like building a house. What we're now trying to do is do sharing across the global scale on, on an internet scale. And the issue of scale really makes the solutions that would be appropriate quite different. Let me now go into a few scenarios that will help motivate some of the uh, problems I bring about later in the talk. And the first scenario I'm going to describe is a first responder scenario. So let's say there's, uh, there's a fire that breaks out in a building and the local firefighting department, they respond to, to the fire. Now, unknown to the firefighters, there's a warehouse next to this building and the DHS and FBI, they have indications that there's a terrorist cell operating out of that warehouse and there's some hazardous material, some biohazardous or chemical material. The fire now spreads into that warehouse and the firefighters are about to enter it. Now clearly the information about that terrorist cell and the hazardous material is relevant to that mission. It will help save people's lives, the firefighters' lives, the lives of other citizens around there. But these firefighters are usually the least trusted people. They're the frontline people, they're the least trusted in the organization. They are not given access to this information. And this is one of the central problems facing information sharing. How do you get sensitive information to frontline people who are usually not cleared for this information but have a burning mission critical need for it? This is another version of that problem. Um, and this is an instance where you have a, a, a police officer. He pulls over somebody in a car, takes pictures with a handheld PC, maybe scans a passport, a driver's license, or, 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 or other piece of identification. This query goes to federated databases. The responses must be integrated, sanitized, and the response is sent back to this officer within a few minutes. He doesn't have much time. And all, this requires a lot of sensitive information to be processed, the results compiled, and then given back to the frontline officer. A third scenario, this is a battlefield mission scenario. So in this scenario, let's say you have two battalions. Battalion one urgently needs reinforcements. And the brigade commander wants to send the classified location of battalion one to the commander of battalion two, except the communication channel has been compromised. The enemy has overrun the comm equipment and the security has been broken. So now the commander is faced with a dilemma. If he sends the information, the enemy is going to know it. If he doesn't send the information, battalion one is in serious trouble. So on the battlefield, commanders must constantly make these kinds of risk-benefit decisions. In the commercial world, this happens as well, but in, in a lot of di in different contexts. A final scenario is um, a tax case agent scenario. So let's say you have an agent who's analyzing a virtual case file of a particular tax paying entity. Now this agent must deal with a lot of different entities. He must know information about tax shelters. He must have access to tax law expertise, uh, revenue agents, a taxpayer, state and uh, other international authorities. And all these agencies must share information to be able to figure out if is there some tax violation going on. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is in moving into what exactly do I mean by information sharing. So I'm going to use a relatively informal definition of sharing, that sharing is the act of letting another party use data. Now, this has several implications. First, of course, is that there's a set of parties. Sorry, there's some data, there's a set of objects that you want to share. There's a set of sharing participants, and these participants are going to play different roles. And finally, there's a set of different requirements. So you have participants who play roles of producers, consumers, facilitators. There's a set of different requirements that producers need, consumers need to be able to discover information. Producers need to be able to discover consumers. They need to be able to access each other. Once a consumer gets the data, he needs to be able to understand it in order to use it. And finally, there's policy that cross-cuts all these three areas. And there are actions that